Well, welcome back to Vermont. This is part five of the antenna farm series, which is focused on installation. Uh, so here you can see I'm getting packed up and ready to head up north. And I've got that antenna mast uh, in some way tied to my pickup. Uh, the reason I've got a ladder there is I've got all of those tension wires that I don't want damaged. And so you can see I'm, I'm trying to suspend it within the ladder and have it basically float there in place and not um, hop around on my trip. And it worked out. I got a lot of looks on my drive, I can tell you that much. Um, but I made it there. Uh, it took me about two hours on the road. And uh, in this image you can see I'm parked in front of the, front of the camp. And I wanted to show you, uh, you can see of course the mast uh, my truck's right below out of the frame, but up up in the center of the roof is that tripod mount and the um, original CB antenna on top of a 10-foot pole. So that's the scope of the project right there. Here in this next video, I just wanted to show you, you can see there's, I got two wood fires going in the camp, uh, got the truck unpacked, and the first order of business is get some fires going and get the place warmed up. And the mast is there leaning against the roof. And against the sidewall of the camp is a ground rod and uh, that tram dual band antenna in pieces uh, ready to be assembled. So got everything I need and I won't be working on anything this particular evening. Just get the camp warmed up, uh, get a meal going and think about uh, the plan for tomorrow. So the next morning uh, it dropped overnight down to about 26 degrees. And I uh, just wanted to pick up the image. We got some frost on the vehicle and getting coffee made, getting breakfast going. And uh, just, again, putting that plan together. By the time I get out and started work, the sun had come up and driven off some of the frost off the ground and warmed things up. Uh, it was shaping up to be a beautiful day. So in this little scene I recorded, you can see um, laying on the ground. I've already got that. 10 foot pole uh, from the CB antenna in the SolarCon A99 removed from the roof and I'm refixturing it to this new mast as described in the prior uh, videos. And also the tram dual band up on the higher uh, fixture part of this mast. So I'm just showing you how that looks here. And after getting both of those antennas clamped into place and making a, a good effort to get them uh, both parallel and in line with the mast so they're not going to be leaning in one direction or the other. They'll be uh, vertical with the mast installed. Uh, the next important step is, of course, this is going to be out of reach when we put it in place. So as I work my way back down, just to tie off the connect <laughs> and tie off the coax cables all the way down the mast in, an, in a neat fashion, um, back down the, the T or the, the legs of the Y there, uh, the triangle, and then down the center mast. And try to do it in a nice orderly way where the wind won't work at them and uh, they'll, they'll just look appropriate. So then we jump to this image which shows the mast and antennas installed, and I'll give a close-up later. Um, but what was missed here is all of the uh, sweat and grunting and um, near hernias involved. Uh, for two of us. My brother was helping me here and uh, we climbed up on the roof and pulled that mast assembly up toward the tripod and uh, like like Mount Suribachi, he and I tipped this mast up um, and got it vertical and, and uh, tried to balance it. Of course it's very top heavy, a high center of gravity on that assembly. Not heavy overall, the thing probably weighs 20 pounds, 25 pounds, but uh, most of the weight was up in the air. So it's, you know, lifting that up the two feet and getting it dropped into that tripod was a bit of a trick. And uh, thankfully, both of us, without talking to each other, knew exactly what was going on with the physics and we could work it together. And uh, we did it on our first try and nobody got hurt and uh, nothing was damaged. So it, it wasn't easy, but uh, it worked out pretty well. Oh, and I thought I would give you a zoomed in picture of some of the placards on this facility. Again, it's uh, for official use only. And as I had mentioned in an earlier video, um, 
if things get a little bit spicy and uh, you need a place to hide out, it's, it's rated as a nuclear fallout shelter. Um, of course, that's a joke, um, but it has to do with some of the history of my family and uh, things that we've worked on. So I thought I would share that kind of, kind of a inside joke. And here it is a bit later in the, in the day, early afternoon, and the sun had come back out. And it can, you know, we're showing you here that there it is in place. It's only being held right now by that tripod and uh, it's a little bit leaning to the right as an assembly. You can notice that quite well. Unfortunately, that tripod, some of the adjustment bolts in that are from the mid nineties and aren't really functional anymore. I did my very best to make adjustments in the tightening screws in the clamps. To and we made a little bit of progress there. Uh, in this next picture, you can see it's a, a little bit improved. And I just wanted to show you, I, you know, I love when a plan comes together. So this looks pretty close, strikingly, to the plan that I had described to you on a, on a piece of paper as I set out on this project. So very, very happy with the results. And after thinking about this installation, I wasn't ready to leave it as it is, and I decided that I was going to put some guy wires off from the mast down to the roof. Uh, would, you know, allow me to sleep better and not worry about it when we were away. Actually, before, before I began the guy wire installation, I just showing you here, I attached the ground wire, which you can see running down the mast facing the camera here. That's the the ground wire hooked to that ground stud and you can also see the paracord which I um, ran through the pulley and it's there's nothing on it it's just a loop of cord tied together and uh, the excess wrapped around the base here as well and then zip tied both pieces of coax the CB and the ham radio plus the ground wire down the legs of the tripod and they make their way over to the peak of that um, secondary roof and from there, the original CB heads down away, continues down the valley away from the camera. And uh, the ground wire ran along with the CB cable. And break, making a break for the right side valley is the new um, dual band UHF VHF coax. So here's another view from that uh, earlier valley I showed up on the roof where the CB and the ground wire ran, looking up at the antenna and brought the cables down and put a drip loop, uh, gave enough slack where they wouldn't pull against that metal roof, and ran, ran it up underneath the eaves of the camp and split the ground wire off and ran it down the wall and drove, thankfully, uh, we were able to drive that eight foot ground rod by hand uh, because the, the hammer drill and the driver accessory that I had uh, wasn't the right size. So I thought I would come back and do this part another day. And my brother encouraged me we could at least try it by hand. And I'm glad he did. Uh, I would have left it and given up. But uh, both of us working together, one to stabilize that rod and the other swinging a maul. Uh, and we swapped off as we got tired. Uh, had a lot of laughs actually, but we're successfully and get the, got that ground rod connected and then drove the connection down just beneath the soil, weed trimmers and lawnmowers wouldn't hit it and uh, I tucked the rest of the the wire down with a, a small hand you know hand dug, dug trench so that it would just be protected and not a trip hazard so then back up on the roof I go uh, for those guy wires and this is me on the ladder which was just tall enough to reach the top of that T section of the mast when installed and kept telling myself that I'm not afraid of heights and looking back down at the mast those eyelets, those bent nails that were welded on, and they secured, of course, those internal guy wires that were stretched out in tension to, to stiffen up the mast. I put on some additional eyelets and cables, just draped them off, uh, which you can see here. And uh, of all the cable that I had left with me, I, I cut it into three equal lengths, and thankfully they were all long enough to do a good stable job at, at stiffening up this mast. And in that process, uh, with some help of observers on the ground in both directions, I, I pulled on each of these three guy wires, two down to the front of the camp and one out back 
in the center um, to take up the rest of that lean the best that I could there. And I got some of it back out. And I wasn't pulling these guy wires very tight at all. Um, tight enough that they were holding a load, but not, not real tight at all. Uh, but it doesn't take much force to keep this from blowing over in any wind. You know, five, five or ten pounds of tension against uh, the prevailing wind was, I hope, enough to keep this safe. And I'll, I'll know as we get through one winter and uh, one or two wind events, <laughs> which are pretty predictable in October and uh, November. So here is a quick clip of me up on the roof after the job is mostly completed. Just showing you the guy wire uh, as I've got them run out each way and one down the back. And, you know, just observing and overlooking the whole job and looking for things that I've neglected or forgot. But it gives you a good view of the final installation from the vantage point up on the roof. I really couldn't be happier with how this came out. Uh, very thankful for the help I had with my brother with me. I, I would have tried this alone and probably hurt myself. <laughs> uh, but we were successful together and it was a lot easier. And that's, uh, that's the end of the install video. I didn't have much video showing me in work. It was too difficult with the equipment I had. So I just best I could do for you all is narrate some images and videos, um, as we went along. But I did install my radio and I made, made some calls, had an active QSO, uh, which is a, you know, a, a communication between two ham stations successfully and went as the crow fr flies on 20 watts of power about 60, 65 miles uh, in that, in the direction I was hoping for, which gets me back near my home. So um, that was very encouraging, and as well as I picked up some other antennas and repeaters in the area. Uh, it's hopeful, but I was very, very glad that I could reach uh, nearly back to my house. Possibly I'll do some more testing. Possibly I can make, make the trip. Um, simplex so my home antenna to my camp antenna directly uh, i'll need to do some more testing on that and that was the that was the hope and i'm very glad about it so i think i'll leave you here and this will complete the series and uh i'll just leave you with a a little image of comfort and uh the voice that you hear is my grandfather singing probably in the early 70s so enjoy that Thank you for watching, and uh, as always, welcome to Vermont. Thanks for visiting, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm not quite sure what that will be. We'll find out together. Have a great day. I feel the warmth of the wood stove at my feet And my wife's warm loving hands caress my cheek while she just brought in maple syrup With some cider and some donuts And hell, if I'm poor, I don't know it